scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Holy, holy, I will bow before my Lord and King. Hallelujah, you have come to us and you make all things new. Emmanuel. Jesus Christ, you'll never let me go. My shepherd king, you're watching over me. Emmanuel. Father, we pray and we ask that you make your presence mighty and manifest in our midst. Finally tonight, let age-long captivities be broken. Open our eyes, O God, and establish our authority. Let there be a manifest display of the victory of Christ over Satan, over curses over yokes and everything that does not name the name of christ we open our spirits and we ask you to help us and show us mercy in the name of jesus christ amen and amen god bless you please be seated complete deliverance part three <laughs> hallelujah Okay, so like I said, the ushers are going around. Just speak your communion and then don't be distracted. We're getting to the word. Um, we'll have sessions to pray, take the communion, and then we'll minister the power of the Holy Spirit. I am a believer in the Christian experience that is backed up with signs and wonders. I believe that Jesus is alive. And I believe in the total and complete victory of Jesus. The defeat of Satan, the defeat of yokes and curses is a reality. And in this series, our intent is to establish that reality practically in our lives. Hallelujah. Please, I want to plead with you to do well, to listen to part one again, listen to part two. Tonight, I'm happy, but then I'm also sad, and I'll tell you why, for both reasons. I'm happy because someone's captivity is coming to an end. I'm happy because tonight will be an opportunity to enlighten the body again, as far as the dynamics of um, the ministry of deliverance is concerned. But I'm sad because in preparing my notes for this night i had to edit so many things i at a point in time 
I, I had to just stop and rest my head and say, my God, to be able to do justice to this entire series in truth, I will tell you, it will require at least a six-part series, not just a three-part series. There are so many things I've had to take. In fact, the last time we did the mystery of deliverance, it was a four-part series. And this is now, we have to end for now. There are so many things that um, we need to know, but um, I may have to edit some of them. And then in teaching some of the things I'm teaching today, very sadly, I may not be able to press into the kind of depth that I would want to go. So this is where my sadness stems from. But then we have other series that are still related to this, and I hope that when we get there, we'll be able to just dot the I's and cross the T's. Albeit, we know that with what we have gotten tonight, it is sufficient alongside the ones that have come to grant us victory established in reality. If you are in agreement with me, say amen. amen. So let me apologize in advance. Honestly, I kept looking at my notes and wondering what I would teach and what I would omit because um, when it has to do with mentoring believers who thoroughly understand how to establish victory, you should not omit anything provided it comes from scripture. It is very important. The Bible says, lest Satan would take an advantage of us. And the advantage comes by his accessing the loopholes and the gaps in our spiritual understanding. But then we have to work with the allowance that um, time has provided for us. Let me do a five minutes recap and then I'm holding my notes here. I hope you have yours. Praise the name of Jesus. Our text for this series has been John 8:36, the Amplified. John 8:36, the Amplified, it says, if the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. It says, really and unquestionably free. Really and unquestionably free. Part one, we began to discuss the biblical basis for the study of Satan and demons. We wanted to be sure that we're not walking in error as far as the word of God is concerned. And we examined a few scriptures that give us the allowance to study on Satan and demons. We looked at the biblical basis for the study of Satan and demons. Um, we looked at the Old Testament, the life and the ministry of Jesus. Jesus taught about the satanic kingdom. He administered deliverance himself. We looked at the life of the apostles and the early church. They taught Paul himself in his Pauline epistles, taught about the structure of the satanic kingdom. And then he also taught, uh, he administered deliverance. Then we looked at the origin of Satan, the origin of Satan. We couldn't do justice to the origin of demons, the, the concept of the Nephilims, the disembodied spirits. And this is one of the things that now make me feel sad because we couldn't really press for the kind of knowledge that we need to have um, to understand where these disembodied spirits come from. Because if you understand that, you will know why they crave for human bodies. Hallelujah. And that every time demons are not in a human body they are in a perpetual state of torture and restlessness that you can be sure jesus himself taught us that every time a spirit demon spirits are within this territory and are not in a human or material body there is a consequence for being in this realm and not having a material body the consequence is torture because according to the law of territory, every spirit that resides within this domain must be resident within a material body. So even the Holy Spirit, when he comes, he lives within the believers. Are we together? So you can be sure of this, that demons are under a state of perpetual torture and restlessness every time 
they are not within a human body now human bodies according to scripture are not the only bodies that demons can occupy they can occupy animals they can occupy all kinds of things but the reason why human bodies are the most preferred is number one we are the zenith of god's creation the most complex of all his creation and then number two authority was given to the believer the human it wasn't given to animals and plants and so satan is most comfortable to wreck his antichrist agenda when he operates in and through a human body so we looked at that and then we looked at um, a bit of the reality of evil in scripture the fact that we live in a wicked world and that it takes understanding to be able to prevail part two last week we considered the structure and the operations of satan and demons i hope you still remember we looked at the structure of satan um, according to revelations we said that satan has angels and he fell together with a third of the angels and that satan alongside the demonic demons or evil spirits make up what we call the satanic kingdom we did emphasize that satan has a singular assignment to fight and frustrate the purposes of god by any means the theme that drives the activity of the satanic kingdom is to fight and frustrate the purposes of god but satan's unique goal and agenda is for transgenerational allegiance and dominion over the saints you have to understand this satan has his personal manifesto his personal agenda and the satanic kingdom as an organized demonic kingdom also have their manifesto are we together the drive for the entire satanic kingdom is to fight and frustrate the purposes of god by any means by any means sickness poverty delay retrogression causes yokes by any means but satan as the head of that kingdom has his unique agenda and the agenda is for complete dominance over the saints and then to create a system for transgenerational allegiance i told you this is where the whole idea of causes and demonic patterns and yokes come from they were a design to make sure that from one generation to the other allegiance towards satan remains um, a reality so we did we dealt with satan's operational system that satan and demons fight they hinder they resist they kill they steal they destroy and all of that and i did tell us last week that of all the strategies and the operations of satan the most pronounced in the bible is deception you still remember yes and that to deceive means to deliberately cause someone to believe something that is not true usually for personal gain or to take an advantage of that person deception is to deliberately cause someone to believe something that is not true usually for personal gain we define deception or falsehood as a statement or an action that is intended to mislead hide the truth promote a false idea often for personal gain and we did say last week that deception cannot happen until the deceiver is aware of the truth there is no possibility for deception until the person doing the deceiving in this case satan you must be aware of the truth to be able to deceive so satan by this definition is not ignorant of the truth because deception is to deliberately manipulate someone to believe what is not true deception cannot happen until the deceiver is aware of the truth we now look at a study on how satan operates i taught us last week that there are three levels of satanic influences i'm taking this because we have to connect from there to our teaching tonight that the first is called witchcraft and i did teach us that witchcraft necessarily does not deal with drinking blood eating flesh our traditional idea of witchcraft witchcraft simply means to cause you to think to cause you to act 
to cause you to talk in error using the tool of deception that is witchcraft all other traditional practices they may be expressions of deception but according to scripture deception means to cause a man to think to act and to talk in error using i mean witchcraft now using the tool of deception the second level is manipulation and control and i told us that this is largely in the realm of the mind and that believers even spirit-filled believers can be manipulated now you find out that every time you see or most times when you read scripture especially in the gospels when it has to do with demons and their victims it uses an english expression possessed now not all the greek words there mean possessed in fact most of the expressions is the word demonized the word demonized there does not mean it means to be under the influence or some level of control of demons we agreed that there is manipulation and control and that even believers can be victims of this and then the third level is complete influence and control we call that possession where your spirit your mind and your body comes under the total influence of that spirit we agree that a christian cannot be possessed by the definition of possessed now that means when you come into christ through the new birth experience you are joined to christ and the bible declares that he that is joined to christ remember is one spirit so a believer cannot be possessed but a believer can be demonized a believer can be controlled at the solical realm are we together yes now we define deliverance and i'll end my recap from that definition that deliverance essentially has to do with rescue and freedom from bondage from danger or evil the whole idea of deliverance has to do with rescue and freedom from bondage from danger and from evil deliverance has to do with salvation to salvage an individual from a condition or from an influence here is the definition of deliverance i gave us last week please listen if you have it down and you write if you do not have it down deliverance is the scriptural strategy for experientially establishing the victory and the authority of jesus christ over satan and demonic forces as it relates to the life and the destiny of a believer that means when we have to do with deliverance deliverance is a scriptural strategy for experientially establishing the victory and the authority of jesus christ over satan and demons as it relates to the life and the destiny of the believer i wrote here deliverance and by extension spiritual warfare for the believer please listen is about establishing and manifesting victory rather than fighting for it a very important thought that biblical deliverance is based on the fact that we are establishing and manifesting the victory that is in christ not fighting for it to fight for it in the sense of hoping we will get it is saying that the work of the cross was a lie are we together now when jesus said it is finished he meant it his victory over satan sin hell and the grave was total it was complete our assignment now is to engage the weapons of victory we have been given to establish and manifest that which is finished his finished work is the basis for our audacity to even dare to establish that so you have to understand this because there are many expressions of deliverance in the body of christ that does not really stem from the victory of christ that is already defeat from day one if you ever approach the subject of deliverance and satan demonology as though you are not sure of jesus's victory and you are not sure of satan's defeat you are hoping that as you contend you will find out who won that you are already defeated that ignorance is your defeat you don't need to be fought you are already defeated are we together so deliverance for a believer 
is about establishing and manifesting victory not fighting for it hallelujah so part three now we'll begin our discussion we'll be very fast may the lord grant us grace in jesus name um the chief sponsor i spoke last week let me also touch this that of all the manipulations of satan and the satanic kingdom and as complex and as complicated as it is world over there are only three access points remember that satan has only three access points as revealed from scripture there are only three access points by which satan and demons access men even believers number one covenants number two ignorance number three disobedience one more time number one covenants number two ignorance number three disobedience these are the only scriptural access points if satan ever has an advantage on the believer these are the only access points so if you can close these doors satan truly in experience will remain helpless over your life I taught you that of these three, the most effective for Satan, strangely, are covenants. Why? Because covenants are transgenerational in context. And then covenants can be territorial. Your ignorance affects you. Your disobedience affects you, even though it can spill to others. But principally, you are the chief victim. But covenants can bring whole territories under the siege of Satan on legal grounds. That covenants are empowered by altars. Remember the teaching? That an altar is a system of authorization that are built to make sure that the terms of the covenant keep running even when the initiator of the covenant is no longer there please understand this now that means if a covenant is set with the devil for poverty or for untimely death there must be an altar the altar is like the battery that powers that covenant the altar is a system of authorization and it is usually ratified with blood take note of blood because we'll be dealing with it very seriously are we together yes every altar is powered by blood the human blood animal blood whatever it is so the altar ensures that the terms of the covenant keep happening to the participants or the victims of the covenant even when the initiator is long gone so altars make covenants powerful covenants are not powerful in themselves altars are the systems of compliance that make sure that even though you were not there when the covenant was put in the altar will ensure that the covenant based on the terms of agreement it will fish you out and execute the terms to the latter let me tell you covenants are precise except on him that they will happen exactly as agreed no matter your enlightenment you will be shocked and surprised the terms it will happen that way whether it's a covenant of whatever it is untimely death covenant of whatever it is you worship satan he will give you this if you violate it there will be consequences if covenants are not superimposed by the things that you're going to be learning today it will walk to the latter you can go abroad you can travel to europe you can travel to america the covenant will slowly haunt you there and with the precision of a surgeon it will execute everything as agreed most people think because you run away from the physical location where the covenant happened you are free this is the deception that has tied down people so just because you ran away from the village or you ran away from the place where the shrine was or even because you destroyed the shrine and set it on fire you can say it is done time will show whether it is truly done because covenants and altars are spiritual are we learning now both covenants listen carefully disobedience ignorance depend on a state there is something they look for 
in every human to walk this is called the flesh write it down oh dear i wish i had time we'll just touch on this quickly so that we will rush the concept of the flesh is one that i submit to you has not been thoroughly understood in the body of christ the reason for a justifiable reason when you read the pauline epistles and you you read about the frustrations of paul and believers um it, it makes you confused as to the flesh versus with respect to the victory that is in christ the flesh romans chapter 7 and verse 18 i'll just touch it very briefly and then we'll rush romans 7 18. here's what paul said paul himself got to a point where he was venting his frustration he couldn't keep quiet again this is paul already in ministry for i know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing for to will is present with me he says but how to perform that which is good i find not paul then he began to speak when you read further he says for with my spirit i serve the lord but in my body i see another law walking in my members he was so frustrated he said oh wretched man that i am who shall deliver me from this body of death this was the apostle expressing his frustration i thought i now have victory in christ why then is this flesh alive in me When you read Galatians chapter 5, from verse 16 down to 21, particularly 16 and 17, let's look at it for reference. This I say then, Apostle Paul is speaking, walk in the spirit, he says, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. 17, he says for the flesh, this is a very powerful information, the flesh lusted against the spirit, fight, contend and the spirit against the flesh he says and these are contrary one to the other so that ye cannot do the things that ye would now let me clear that confusion by the spirit of god please look up revelation is powerful oh, in the name of jesus what you don't know can destroy you satan can use the gaps in your knowledge and confuse you and take an advantage of you now what believers do not know theologically is that the flesh what the flesh means to the unbeliever is not the same thing as what the flesh means to the believer listen carefully there is the flesh as a concept before salvation and there is the flesh as a concept after salvation they are all called flesh but the character of their operation is not the same let me just put that in perspective and we jump is that all right what is the flesh before salvation that means with respect to an unbeliever the flesh with respect to an unbeliever is called the sin nature do not forget this it is called the sin nature what is the sin nature it is a nature of speaking it is a nature of thinking it is a nature of acting it is a nature of living that will always be against the word of god I'll take it again the flesh before salvation this is the first dimension of our concept of the flesh according to scripture the flesh before salvation that means when you are dealing with the subject of the flesh with respect to an unsaved person the flesh means the sin nature a nature of speaking a nature of thinking a nature of acting and a nature of living that will always the key word is always always be against the word of god it's called the flesh furthermore i wrote this this is the very nature of satan at work in the spirit the mind and the body of the unregenerate man this is the very nature of satan at work in the spirit the mind and the body of the unregenerate man are we together yes so to the unbeliever when you mention the word flesh from a biblical standpoint now it means the embodiment of that sin nature the very nature of satan that was the nature that came upon man 
by reason of his fallen state when man fell among the many tragedies that happened to him was that he lost the life of god in replacement to that life he had and became an embodiment of the sin nature when the bible says he who knew no sin became sin jesus himself had to subscribe to that sin nature to destroy it this nature this sin nature that is exactly what the death the burial and the resurrection of jesus defeated that nature are we together now so the concept of the flesh to the unbeliever or before salvation has to do with the very nature of satan and that is what the death the burial and the resurrection of jesus a legitimate ground to cut you away from the influence of that life the very nature that the death the burial and the resurrection of jesus defeated is called the sin nature or you find it in the bible the flesh that is one side now when you are saved to the believer in christ sadly and strangely the bible also uses the concept of the flesh but now this time around the idea of the flesh with respect to one who is in christ does not necessarily mean the sin nature again there is a word for the flesh for the believer it is called self are you seeing that now self the nature of self we have a teaching in the nearest future to deal with this so i won't go into that that deep but if you have the chance to listen to my teaching sadly it's an audio christ-centered living please listen to it christ-centered living i teach there about self that all of the limitations of the believer in christ who although the victory of christ has conquered the sin nature that we call flesh there is still another dimension of of, of flesh that the bible calls self the inability to intentionally live your life with the consciousness that everything about you should glorify the lord is called self the bible says glorify the lord with your body which is the lord's so the nature of self that the bible calls flesh in the believer is what produces the numerous ills that now plague the believers that paul is saying look with my spirit i serve the lord but in my body even though i am saved i still see another law that does not negate the victory of christ this is self and the key to the defeat of that self is found in galatians chapter 5 verse 16 this i say walk ye in the spirit now you can see that the solution is not being born again not being saved he's talking to people who are already saved that you must walk in the spirit in fact he says set your affections on things above and not on the things that are earthly and then when you read on dealing with that again paul the apostle himself will tell you i die daily i crucify the flesh that nature of self that seeks it is because of the appetite for self-glorification and vainglory the absence of the consciousness that you have been bought with a price that can open you up to a plethora of ills and he's saying the cure is to be spirit-minded the cure is to deaden this flesh we'll look at it when we get to deliverance proper are you blessed now so let me just stop here for the flesh now you understand that when the bible talks of the flesh as dealing with the unregenerate man is simply talking of the sin nature there is no amount of counseling that will solve that problem that nature needs to be replaced completely and only the death the burial and the resurrection of jesus the life of god is the cure for that nature are we together when he expresses frustration 
O wretched man that I am, Romans 7, who shall deliver me from this body of death? Then Romans chapter 8 from verse 1, now began a discourse. He said, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Verse 2 says, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Are we together? Administering deliverance. Let's deal with the administration of deliverance now. Now you'll be, you'll be learning practically how to be free from demons, how to be free from curses, how to be free from yokes of darkness. Please listen to this first for yourself, but listen so that God can use you as an envoy of deliverance for others. Are we together? In this kingdom, you don't just learn for yourself, for the promise is unto you and your children and your children's children, as many as are far off, even as many as the Lord, your God will call. Now, there are three levels of deliverance. Write it down, please. Complete and entire and total deliverance is in three levels. This upfront explains the reason why many people experience what we call partial deliverance. The Bible is very clear. Jesus himself in his teaching about demons and how they operate told us that it is possible for a man to be temporarily free of demon spirits and then the demons reinforce and return back so that the state of that man is worse than what it was initially. Jesus is teaching here. So we know for a shorty that it is possible for someone to be delivered sincerely and yet the deliverance is not complete. Can I be honest with you? There are many, many believers in this kingdom who are victims of this, largely because of ignorance. Are we together? Most of what people call deliverance in the body of Christ is only the first step of Bible deliverance. Are you ready to learn? Number one, the first level of deliverance I wrote here, the first level of deliverance is casting out the spirit influences over your life and at the back of your challenges. I will take it slowly. The first level of deliverance has to do with casting out the spirit. Casting out the spirit influences in your life and at the back of your challenges. May I tell you that demons do not only possess and influence men. They can possess conditions. They can possess things. Hmm. A financial condition, a spirit can enter that condition and it no longer becomes an economic condition. Listen, there is a financial condition that is an economic condition and unassisted by any demonic means, it should not it should not threaten you beyond the laws of economics. If you obey the laws of economics, it should bring that condition back to order. But when that condition defy even your obedience, a spirit has possessed that condition. Spirits don't just possess men. They can possess things. They can possess conditions. So when we talk about casting out demons, it does not only have to be out of men. You can cast demons out of conditions. Listen, I can be exhausted and by the simple biological system in a man, chances are excellent that when you are exhausted, based on the biological construct of your body, you may have a headache, you may have whatever it is. It's not necessarily demonic, but demons can enter that situation. At that point, Panadol will act like water. It will not do anything to that condition. That is the reason why you will see that there are many sicknesses that spirits initiated it or took advantage of the health conditions and entered it. Jesus, as we'll be learning, would often cast out the spirit influence. Then he can now deal with the, the issue. Are you seeing now? Very powerful. James chapter 2 and verse 26. Let me show you something. 
a very powerful principle apostle james was teaching us about faith and works and he veered off to explain a very deep and powerful spiritual concept he said for as the body without the spirit is dead he he draws from a mystery and a spiritual principle to help us understand faith and works that means everything that is alive both men and conditions there must be a spirit giving it life do we agree if there is favor on your life physically paul is saying that physical result are we to apostle james he's saying that physical result is not normal there is a spirit that is powering it to happen if there is disfavor he's also saying that physical condition is being powered by a spirit because anybody that does not have a spirit is dead you can build a body call your business but there has to be a spirit that gives it life and if there is no spirit and it is empty satan will come and occupy that business and the business will start acting the same way a demon possessed person acts are we together now you will be surprised that a business the same thing that happens to a human being possessed will happen to your business nobody will come it will be isolated it will go down it will be in decadence a whole territory can be possessed by spirits and you find out that even the physical structures will look like the spiritual state of that place for as a body without the spirit is dead your certificate is a body if all you keep moving around with it you are wasting your time because it is dead there has to be a spirit now unbelievers know this they know this in politics they know this in the business world every physical thing you have is called a body it only has life when it comes from the spirit that empowers it are you learning you only draw your life and strength from your union with a spirit Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10 will come there later on but give us amplified Ephesians 6 and verse 10 please read with me what amplified says are you ready it's projected one to read in conclusion be strong in the Lord it says be empowered through your union with him draw your strength from him that strength which is boundless might be empowered through your union with him your remote control as powerful as it is needs a battery to power it that battery is the spirit of that remote because that's what gives it life is that true when you pour a liquid into your car you call it pms premium motor spirit and you pour that thing inside a physical car and kick it and it starts going and if that thing finishes no matter what your car is it will remain there a body without a spirit is dead as big as your generator is let everything be alive and that fuel that diesel gasoline everything is gone and you will kick it and waste your time what makes you believe your business and your life and your family and your job and your destiny will only move as physical structures there must be a spirit component you actually believe koinonia is just a physical organization that's a mistake can a physical organization do this there has to be a spirit hmm. there are results that men cannot produce unassisted there has to be a spirit component may your life begin to to shock you even from today in the name of jesus christ listen when you know this you don't fear because you are not alone if you depend on all you have you are not much but when the spirit component comes how many of you have seen a tiny remote that you can be playing with like this you go and now i'm not encouraging terrorism in jesus name but those who are in the army what they use 
to activate bombs sometimes it can be a tiny substance like this they can hold it around but let them press that tiny thing and something that is in the sea or somewhere can explode and literally wipe a whole nation in a matter of minutes or hours you can be small but let that spirit component back you you will have results that defy explanations sometimes you have to stop yourself and say what is this may that be someone's testimony after tonight in the name of Jesus Christ so when you see extraordinary results don't ask spiritually childish questions where did it come from you know the answer there has to be a spirit you go back and from tomorrow you see what begins to happen to you in your business your shop has been running as an economic structure change it to a spiritual structure invite the Holy Spirit to be in partnership you've been doing your work just as an intellectual add the spirit component and watch the wonder working power of the spirit believe me I know what I'm saying when you hold my hands everything becomes possible when you hold my hands impossible becomes possible when you hold my hand everything becomes possible when you hold my hand impossible so let's go back to what we are dealing with i told you that there are spirits that attach themselves to your spirit in the case of a possession to your soul and to your body and the legal access like we have learned is through covenants through disobedience and through ignorance so the first step in deliverance is casting out devils do you see that casting out devils is not deliverance casting out devils is part of deliverance there is a difference between deliverance and casting out devils casting out devils is a subset of deliverance just because you have casted out devils does not mean you have administered deliverance is someone learning is God giving us wisdom we generally say I have been delivered and in that you are right but theologically speaking casting out demons or the spirit influence behind individuals behind conditions behind states is only one of the aspects let's look at a few scriptures mark chapter 1 the ministry of jesus is god helping us let's rush mark chapter 1 from verse 22 mark chapter 1 from verse 22 the bible says they were astonished at his doctrine for he taught them as one that had authority listen this is the first miracle of jesus according to the synoptic account of mark the bible says as one that had authority and not as the scribes 23 and there was in their synagogue now are you seeing this now the man with an unclean spirit do you think he came to church believing he had an unclean spirit was he acting like a man with an unclean spirit he came as a very faithful congregant and he sat quietly but the bible says that man had an unclean spirit and he cried out the spirit not the man next verse saying let us alone so you, you know that that man was heavily under the influence of spirits let us alone what have we to do with you thou jesus of nazareth art thou come to destroy us i know who thou art can you imagine that demons know jesus more than believers in an instant they knew without confusion you are the holy one of god 25 this is the first recorded activity of casting out demons by jesus remember i taught you that until jesus showed up they had never seen casting out demons 
by a name no it had never happened for a man to use his authority and rebuke a spirit demons had left people they left in worship in the case of david and in most cases they will stone the person who the demons possess so that if that body dies the spirit will struggle to look for another body again but this was the first time they saw a man with the precision of a surgeon he can remove the spirit and leave the victim alive they said who is this where did you bring this doctrine from we thought that when a man is demonized or possessed that man is over but now jesus is saying you can preserve the man by expelling the spirit and jesus rebuked him saying hold thy peace and come out of him i love jesus mm. verse 26 when the unclean spirit had torn him are you seeing some of these characteristics that means it is not unusual now please pay attention i know that again when i speak like this there is always a boundary of balance but it is not unusual to find out that at the process of expelling spirits they can talk through their victims or there can be manifestations it is not unscriptural satan can take advantage of it but it's a very usual occurrence jesus himself showed us here are we together and cried with a loud voice and came out of him 27 we're reading to 28 the bible says they were amazed in so much that they questioned among themselves saying what thing is this what new doctrine is this for with authority commanded he even the unclean spirits and they obey him may they obey you in the name of jesus christ with authority that you can step into a business and someone can say listen i hear you attend koinonia i i know you have spiritual understanding my entire my whole life is come is crumbling and with the wisdom of one who has been well trained you look at the situation and you can see the signs you know that this is beyond a sociological problem you can detect the presence of demons and while the person hopes that you will comfort them in their lamentation you will tell them my idea of comfort is not crying with you it's bringing liberty to you and you look at that situation this financial situation in the name of Jesus the spirit that is behind it you drive it away and somebody will say my my contract that has not been signed now you know that it's not just a man stopping it behind it there are spirits and they were amazed and they said what is this 28 the last verse now and immediately his fame there is something about authentic biblical deliverance it truly makes noise can I tell you, casting out demons is one of the clearest expression of the superiority of light over darkness. Now, forget about the bad experiences you may have had in the body of Christ. Just allow me to teach you doctrine. Just because you've had bad experiences somewhere, you went to one place or maybe some demonic thing somewhere, I am telling you, if authentic deliverance happens, the testimonies that follow will be too it will be even if you are an introvert you'll be too grateful to keep quiet because you see the way demons operate they operate like an octopus you know how it is with plenty it will usually not touch only one area so there are areas in your life you would not even expect a miracle from but when that one spirit goes it's like wildfire in one day doors can open listen if you are healed in your body of say diabetes it will not affect your finances because this has to do with your body but let one spirit that has been sitting quietly over the many areas of your life i tell you if that one spirit is genuinely fired out of your body and out of your situation things will change most situations that people have hear me are powered by demons if i ask you write your prayer request you can write 30 things you will be surprised that all those 30 things is the same spirit sitting on it so god does not answer one 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 he goes to the root that spirit i'm showing you why casting out demons if done biblically can work wonders
I have seen this happen in the life of people. They came for prayer. Apostle, this is what is wrong with me. Bad dreams or whatever it is. And of course, they will usually have other problems, but in order of priority, they want to deal with the one they consider to be most important. And when they come to me, I look at their situation and I know, and I tell them, you just get ready for testimonies. And sometimes, just hours after that, do you know, let me tell you, until you are really, really, really delivered, you don't know how many things Satan is stopping. Let the deliverance fire of God authentic fire land upon your life and you will see that there were many things that were supposed to have happened to you for your good whereas your area of focus for a miracle is just a job whereas your area of focus is just your health you do not know a lot of other things that are piling up in the realm of the spirit blocked by the presence of spirits that's why I told you when deliverance happens, the fame, the testimonies from it. You will see people listing testimonies as if they are lying because one spirit left. You see, you come for prayer and usually you pray for yourself. But the same spirit oppressing you is the one oppressing your elder brother, the one oppressing your elder sister. So when it leaves, you are not the only one who smiles. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set our hearts for you. So you'll do what you do. We need a move. Can I tell you this? Let me tell you the truth. As uncomfortable as ministering and casting out demons are, I'm not talking of many of the imbalances I have learned in my life. When you truly love people and you want to help them, if you genuinely love people more than your reputation, get demons out of their way and watch the wonder-working power why should a hard-working man not be able to pay the school fees of a child what is it about school fees are you that dull i tell you there is a demon spirit what is it about a young man who begins to work and cannot own a house of it or of his own you are in a city of blessings it's not normal what of those who receive payments they will tell you i got 10 million i got 20 million I'm, I'm a sincere person. I love God. Where the money went to, I don't know. Let me tell you where it went to. There are spirits. Your eyes can only see so much, my dear people. Please take seriously what I'm telling you. Because this night, I assure you by the God of heaven, you came that God will bring this thing to an end now. Please sit down. hallelujah there are spirits that when these spirits manifest people will always misunderstand you listen when Jesus became seen something happened to him Jesus who was an epitome of the love of God was standing Barabbas who was a confirmed criminal was standing they told men choose who should leave they chose Barabbas when people rejection has an explanation why will you choose barabbas somebody who probably stole from your house he was caught in your presence and yet you chose so you see what certain politicians do let me leave that for another day if you are not empowered by the spirit you will call evil light you will call light evil you will walk consciously to evil the people that chose Barabbas were not wicked people. They, they, they found themselves saying, let a curse come on us and our children. And Jesus was just watching them. That is the same way there will be a job that can lift you and bless you. 
there will be another one that will destroy you you will sit down and that spirit can come upon you and you will get up and throw away a job that is full of destiny helpers there are people who had jobs that if they listened to it would have blessed them but a spirit came upon them and made that job look like it's an interruption to ministry they left the job in a bit to become preachers and they found out later they made a big mistake may your eyes be open in this series in the name of jesus christ luke chapter 13 luke chapter 13 we want to see how spirits cause even health conditions verse 10 luke 13 verse 10 and he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the sabbath are we still here next verse please quickly and behold there was a woman which had a what spirit of infirmity remember i taught you last week that spirits are also identified demons unclean spirits they are identified by the character of what they do a spirit of infirmity how long if you ever believe that time casts out demons learn again from this story that time will not exit a demon it can sit on your life from when you are small and if allowed until the day you go to heaven or hell where based on what choice of salvation you make it can remain there 18 years the bible never said this woman was a backslider she was going to church every time and yet that spirit will follow her to church share the grace and go back follow her to church share the grace and go back 18 years until jesus came you're a man of God. May you be a man of God on fire. Yeah. Let people not come and sit down under the influence of your grace and you share the grace and all this backlog of trouble go with them. There was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years. Look at this. The Bible says she was bowed together, something like this, and could not lift herself. Now physically, will you see a spirit on her? no doctors are here they would be able to give it a medical name do you think in that 18 years someone was not compassionate enough to try to treat her verse 12 the bible says when jesus saw her he called her to him and he said to her listen to what he said woman thou art loosed so she was bound if you look at somebody bending you would just say okay maybe it's just cold maybe the weather maybe some kind of medical condition maybe your your spine and all of that and jesus is saying all that explanation you are giving is correct from the physical realm but from the realm of the spirit i wonder what they use to tie her it can be a rope that for 18 years nothing has happened to it verse 13 and he laid his hands are you seeing now the bible says he loosed her from the influence of that spirit then he now laid his hands on her and immediately she was made straight and glorified god read on look at what happened he's giving an explanation here is the explanation i'm interested in the ruler of the synagogues answered with indignation now you know why they were angry were they angry on their own with what i've taught you now because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day. Look at the silly reason for anger that he healed on Sunday. On, well, Sabbath then was Saturday. And said unto the people, there are six days which men ought to walk. In them therefore come and be healed. And not on the Sabbath day. That was the anger of the people. You can see that. If you look at people you can have compassion because you see how foolish their ideas are you know they are empowered by demon spirits how do you get angry for a woman who has been healed for 18 years the first thing to do is congratulate her at least and yet they were angry that anger is not normal humans will rejoice with a woman that way but humans empowered by demons will behave like demons 
that you have received a testimony after 18 years and people are clapping for you and there is actually a human being who looks at you and is not interested in the victory after 18 years and he's warning you that his, his mind is on the sabbath as if it affected him directly verse 15 the lord answered him and said thou hypocrite look at jesus jesus is about to get them doth not each one of you on the sabbath lose your ox uh-huh are you seeing now they had animals and they don't tie them on sunday to respect the sabbath because they need them to feed and be fat so that they can sell them and he's saying you're a hypocrite you can lose your donkey or your goat on sunday to still eat or, or on the sabbath to eat grass and here is a woman the bible says you can lose them a way to eat and then verse 16 let's hurry up jesus is saying ought not this woman being a daughter of abraham that means do you not know there is a covenant what is the covenant in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed that means this woman qualifies based on my agreement with abraham because abraham's covenant was to him and to his seed that the seed being christ and he has come now as an expression of his compassion lo these 18 years be loosed from this bound other versions say who satan had bound for 18 years many health conditions hear me believers many health and medical conditions i submit to you by the authority of scripture have demons behind them i have ministered to people you've you've seen miracles happen here i have seen people whole families that were healed of hiv not stage managed nonsense genuine miracles because the hiv did not come it was not in their bloodline i've heard people tell me i went to bed true story and i saw someone holding a syringe an injection he injected me with whatever it is i woke up physically and started reacting either to hiv or whatever it is they would be on antiretrovirals it would not work and yet the power of god comes in one moment and that devil of darkness leaves you've seen miracles happen right here in your presence just like that that's how it will happen in your life this night in the name of jesus christ one last scripture luke 11 and 14 very simple scripture i want to show you how that demon spirits are behind many cases of ill health the bible says and he was casting out a devil the he being jesus and it was dumb the victim and it came to pass when the devil was gone out what happened the dumb spake and the people wondered that means anything in your life that is not speaking there is a spirit when that spirit is cast out that thing starts speaking whether it's your influence whether it's your honor whether it's your glory the dumb speak now in scripture you will see two expressions when it has to do with expelling demons number one is the word rebuked number two the word cast out it is these are very usual expressions when it has to do with casting out demons rebuked or you know to cast out take note of that and then i told you notice that the spirits were identified based on the issues that they caused let's look at one more scripture for sake of time acts chapter 16 acts chapter 16 i'm showing you the first level of deliverance casting out the demons the spirit influences verse 16 Acts 16 verse 16 it came to pass as we went to prayer a certain damsel with a spirit of divination met us which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying we were discussing this with our school of ministry students and we we're laughing that not all profit is profit 
here is a relationship between a spirit of divination and profit she brought her master's profit and yet it was by the spirit of divination 17 the bible says and the same followed paul and us and cried saying these are men these men are the servants of the most high were they lying please talk to me were they lying which show us the way to salvation what is more accurate than what this girl said 18 the bible says this she did many days but paul being grieved turned and said to the spirit not the girl the spirit i command thee in the name of jesus come out of her and he came out the same hour He came out the same hour. Note that manifestations when casting out demons is usual and biblical. That means it does not mean there has to be manifestations when you cast out demon spirits. But that even when it happens, it is not unusual. Like you see all the time here. It does not necessarily mean that the people are possessed. Now you know that there are different levels. When you are ministering, when you are casting out devils or ministering deliverance as we know, both the unbeliever who is possessed and the spirit who is demonized, they will manifest the same way. And so you can mistake it to mean that they are possessed but Christians cannot be possessed by demon spirits are we together now hello scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you